what is CCDI first of all? Cape Craft and Design Institute. And we are, of course, one of the craft and design capitals of the world, and that's been recognised internationally. So is, is that the sort of thing that gives a boost to your initiative? Um, absolutely. So World Design Capitals um, 2014, so kind of 18 months away, mm. but less. Um, and it's a fantastic opportunity for us to showcase design in all forms. So not just sort of product design, but design in terms of our environment, our systems, the way we live our lives. Mm. Yeah. But of course, the sort of work that the CCDI has done over the years, over the 11 years since its inception, has sort of paved the way for the accolade that you've just described, I suppose. One hopes so, yeah. I mean, I think we haven't done it alone. So I think we've got to give credit to all the, the other people who play a role in, in the environment. I think um, initiatives like the Design in Darba have definitely put design on the, on, the, on the sort of international and local platform. Which is a growing, which is a growing event each year. I mean, every yeah. time I happen to pop in there, it seems to me that it's almost doubled in size from the previous year. And, and the attendees are also, it just seems to, to grow every time. Yeah. And that's in fact what entrepreneurship development is about. So I think the opportunity of World Design Capital and then spaces like Design and Darba are, are they're sort of marketplaces and promotion places for people to expose their, their goods. Mm. And in the environment we work in, that's actually probably the most important thing. One of the things that I've sort of been trying to uh, uh, put forward on Power Lunch this week has been the fact that it's all very well having the theory, you know, entrepreneurship and SMEs are, are great on paper and you can create this amount of jobs. But I like the practical examples as well. We had a lady from Sassel, uh, Chem City, yesterday. Mm. And when she actually told me of a, of, of a, of a case study, it actually suddenly hit home what can be done. Maybe you've got a few over the last 11 years that you could tell us. Well, when we started, um, we had a list of 63 craft producers in the Western Cape, so small businesses that we were supporting. Now, I think our database has over 3,500 entities. So that's a sign of growth in the, in the sector. A lot of those companies have started in the last 10 years. Um, and they, they're just growing, they're, sort of, they're finding new markets, they're developing their products, they're employing more people. When you talk about employing more people, I did see a statistic you've created 10,000 jobs. Well, at least, at least those 3,500 um, businesses, if you multiply by five, it's, it could be more. So, so conservatively, because we don't have the, the sort of uh, statistical data, Mm. Um, we say in excess of 10,000 jobs are supported by those businesses. So they're not all, they're also not all full-time jobs, um, which is an interesting thing about the, the, the creative sector and the creative industries is that a lot of the jobs are, you know, they're driven by opportunity and whether people have orders and the ability to, to meet demand essentially. Mm. And so I suppose a job like um, our institute, the World Design Capital, is, is that we need to, to stimulate that market demand because the more consistent that market demand is, the greater the, the possibility is of those jobs becoming more permanent. Yeah, well, let's hope they, they do. I mean, you receive uh, funding, 14 and a half million, which must be a massive boost for you. I mean, in the early days, you probably didn't get that sort of funding. Yeah. What will that funding go towards? So that funding is a specific jobs fund fund grant that we've been given over the next three years. From local government, from, from national no, government? it's a jobs fund grant. So it's mm. for DBSA run, national government. It's part of the nine billion uh, um, jobs fund that was set aside. So we're getting a fraction of that. Um, and it's actually going to support 36 companies who are part of the project and most of that money will be capital investment into those businesses with the, with the outcome that they'll create another 450 jobs. Yeah, and you say here that you've got your three core programs, what are they? Our three core programs are business support, market support and product support and those are the three areas that we think any business, in fact big, medium or small, actually has to take into account all, all the time. Um, you know, how, how, how marketable is the product, what is their competitive advantage, where they're distributing that product, um, what are their markets, what are their new markets, and then sort of from a business perspective, how they're employing people, how they're managing the cash flow, how efficient their production is. And also don't, look, uh, don't f to forget the, the export market as well. I'm sure a lot of your people are exporting, but when I look at my screen now and see the round at 8.90 against the US dollar, 14.10 against the, uh, the yeah. British pound, etc. Yeah. Suddenly, I mean, all your, your, your products, are, or many products are probably competitive anyway, but suddenly they become more competitive That's and I think your people must be made aware of that. Yeah, yeah. A large, well, I'd say 20% of the of the of the of the entities are in export um, directly, 
Um, but it, you know, it is, it's difficult also for a small business to export because it's quite, a, I mean, the volatility of the rand is one of, one of the issues. Mm. Um, so it's a kind of, a, it's sort of risk, much riskier when, you, when you're dealing with, with small business. And I suppose that's why it needs the support of an organization, organization like 